Hey eBay sellers, it's Suzanne A. Wells. Thanks for coming back for another video. And this is actually a continuation of the Money Making Monday highlighting October 16th. There was a lot on here and some things I wanted to cover, so this is a part two. If you are not familiar with Money Making Mondays, it is a thread on my Facebook group where sellers post what they found, where they found it, how much they paid for it, how long it took to sell, if they can remember, and a link to the item. And we do post links, not screenshots, because that enables everyone viewing this to actually go to the listing and see what the item was and look at all the details as far as listing type, duration, if they took a best offer, all of that kind of stuff. So if you are not in my group, come on over and join. You don't have to post anything or talk to anybody if you don't want to. It's just a great place to um, learn about what to sell and also to network with other sellers if that's what you want to do. So anyway, back to the Money Making Monday items. Let me see if I can make this a little bigger here. Okay, Diane posted this listing about a stack of magazines from a library sale for a dollar sold in 10 days for thirty dollars and so I wanted to speak to library sales um, yes a lot of people go there with their book scanners and they are um, rather aggressive <laughs> as far as you know getting the books at the book sales I did that for a while when I was getting into Amazon in about I think it was 2009 2010 around that time when books were the thing and tried out that business model and I just I couldn't take those library sales it was just they were just too aggressive there was just people tag teaming each other and throwing stuff across the room and um, a lot of sales don't even allow scanners in there anymore because it just got so out of hand but what I wanted to mention was libraries often have things for sale all the time and it doesn't have to be a specific you know annual semi-annual sale they just have a cart with stuff for sale all the time and actually some libraries I go to they have a free cart so I pick up stuff there all the time just because I'm interested in it and then I'll read it and then redonate it back to either a thrift store a Goodwill or back to the library so anyway um, but she got all these magazines for a dollar and sold them for what'd she say thirty dollars plus shipping so it looks like she took an offer but um, yeah needlepoint is not dead <laughs> obviously and she charged shipping on these so um, it wasn't free shipping and I just wanted to point out that magazines books craft books still sell and here's a great example of that so if you are a library patron check out if they have any free stuff or sometimes they'll have books for 10 cents 25 cents they're usually very cheap and I've done that for years um, magazines books just all all different kinds of things so check that out okay and I also wanted to show you Karen's sale she paid $2.92 at Goodwill sold in a week for $64.99 plus shipping and these are some Disney collectible plates from McDonald's vintage oh, that's the keyword there so there we go $64.99 and they are they go back to 1997 so they are within that 20 year window to be vintage um, that's kind of a loose definition I know that on Etsy things have to be 20 years old to be called vintage but um, people use that term very loosely on eBay so there's really no enforcement of using that word correctly um, but the general idea is vintage is 20 years or older antique is a hundred years or older and I wonder if these were plastic or ceramic it doesn't say it just says six vintage plates and 
must be must have been plastic based on the shipping amount because it's pretty low but I can't really tell from these pictures and I'm just trying to figure this out as so that we'll know what to look for in thrift stores if these were um, breakable or not but I guess I'm thinking since they were a kids plate that they're gonna be plastic so if anybody knows any different please correct me in the comments um, because I just don't know. So Disney plates, great sale there. Okay, here is Connie always finds the, the coolest stuff that um, you would never know sells. <laughs> and this is a Hello Kitty um, rare credit card. I'm guessing this is just it has no balance on it. It's just being sold for its collectible value. And that is a thing. Um, vintage Hello Kitty wallet, rare credit card, 1976, Japan. So let's see exactly what this was. It's a little credit card. Oh, it's a credit card wallet. Okay, I got it now. I thought it was the actual card. But no, it's a little wallet. Still, just a little flimsy, plasticky wallet for a kid. And... How much did she sell it for? $49.99. So 50 bucks for this little thing that would be mixed in with all the junky stuff in the back of a Goodwill, I'm guessing. Um, that's where I find the best stuff is because people just don't know what's worth anything. So she said it was less than a dollar. She's had it listed for over a year. So those of you who are in a hurry, you cannot be in a hurry on eBay. It You just can't. It just doesn't work that way. I see a lot of new people getting in a hurry. Um, things don't sell in a week, three weeks, or um, even a couple of months. This is, this is a marathon, not a sprint. So if you're in this to make money fast, your best bet is probably to go get an hourly job simply because you have to have the patience to do this and just because you list something doesn't mean it's going to sell and just because you don't sell something doesn't mean nobody wants it could be something wrong with your listing could be um, the right buyer hasn't come along yet but here's the perfect example Connie invested less than a dollar in this item that then sold for 50 bucks it took a year to happen though so the longer you do eBay the more stuff you're going to have listed and then things will become a year old and they may sell then but um, I just see so many people getting in a hurry with this business and you can't force it it takes time it takes a special mindset and I don't mean to discourage you when I say you're better off getting an hourly job but um, you know this is for people who understand that this takes great patience and dedication and you will work a lot of unpaid hours before you make any money so you've got to know that going in and if you're okay with that um, and you're willing to spend the time to build the business you will see the results later but it's not going to happen in a week or a month or even six months it takes a lot of time okay let's see what Brittany has here she paid five dollars at Goodwill sold for two weeks in two weeks for $69.99 a pair of brass mirrors let's see what those look like wow that is great those are beautiful I would have picked those up maybe even for myself mirror brass mirrors double candle holder candelabras wall sconces she's got everything in the, that title that is a great title um, and she's got her description there and she charged shipping and she's got a lot of great pictures and it is very hard to photograph pictures of mirrors because you've got to <laughs> you've got to set them up where there's nothing um, in the reflection but she did a great job with that some people just like lay them on a table and then you see the reflection of the ceiling or you know god forbid a body part or something like that that's not supposed to be in the picture or you know um, their camera or whatever but she did a great job here on the photographs of making sure nothing was in the reflection 
that's just that's great this is like a magazine shoot that's just perfect so I commend you on that Brittany for those great pictures that's might be why your items sold so quickly is because your pictures are just fantastic very nice so she turned five dollars into seventy dollars in two weeks so that is a great sale oh and she also did another item here five dollars at a garage sale sold on global shipping program for 49.99 in about one and a half weeks so Brittany is definitely one to watch great sales there okay let's see what else we've got here um, Angela, my favorite little stationary place where I occasionally pick up bubble mailers, has a random junk room filled with stuff that has been buried in their stock room for decades. I found these vintage thermos stoppers, and NOS means new old stock, for 10 cents and have sold two of the six I have available for $10 and $12 each. So, yep, not huge money, but consistent selling and she got it out of a free box and so raise your hand if you <laughs> if you remember the thermos taking a thermos to school with your soup in it or whatever um, I had one mine was a uh, Charlie Brown I think Snoopy something like that um, but you know it's just amazing what still sells so she got this for free and turned it around for um, 10 to 12 dollars each so that is a good good find Angela thanks for sharing that okay let's see here's another cool item Bonnie paid 209 had it listed for five months sold for 24.99 with calculated shipping Ringling Brothers circus items are now collectible since they closed down um, yes they are and I'm glad to hear they closed that down I never liked going to the circus as a kid I just would cry and I didn't like that they were mean to the animals <laughs> my parents were like why are you crying we're at the circus and I'm like they're being mean anyway um, so what is this it's a cup mug cup bowl trunk up so it's plastic and what did she pay for this? 209. And then somebody else says below, I have two of these just to get them from her kids so she can sell them. So look for the Ringling Butt Brother Barnum and Bailey Circus stuff because that's now collectible that the circus is no longer operating, no longer in business okay let's see what else did I want to show you part of my death pile Brian Rappaport says I had these at least 18 months finally listed them as is and sold for eighty dollars after about two months listed so again proof that it can't sell if it's not listed and it's a lot of two Polaroid pogo instant mobile photo printers so he let those sit there for a year and a half which it happens to everybody um, and listed it and it sold in two weeks for 80 bucks so that's a little encouragement to get your items listed if you have those death death piles and if you do um, my virtual assistant service we can help you list that um, I'll put the link to the video at the top right so you can check that out but we are helping so many sellers get their items listed and it just takes that uh, psychological burden off of you you take the pictures and send them to us and we list stuff on your account so look into that if you have not okay what else was I going to show you here okay latch hook um, that's something that people might think is a dying art but I've seen these things sell all the time. Congratulations, Doris, for your first time posting. She paid $5 for a box of these uh, latch hook kits with a few other things at a church sale two weeks ago. Each item ended up costing $0.25, cents, sold one this morning for $20.15 with the shipping. 
And yes, you did it right, so that was perfect. Here's the item. So it is a latch hook kit. Um, we used to do these as a kid. We did a lot of busy work projects as a kid because we did not have all this TV, cable TV. Um, we, we got that when I was a teenager, but um, or you know all the internet and the video games and all that kind of stuff. We did crafts, so they still sell. And I wonder if it says the year on here doesn't say it's probably vintage but this is the kind of stuff that you can pick up cheap that other sellers may not be looking at in your thrift stores they're all fighting over the Ralph Lauren and the shoes and the jewelry and the uh, China and the silver and all that kind of stuff but you can find these other items and that's the challenge is you've got to look at everything in the thrift store you've got to become an expert on everything that's in there and it takes time but you're already in the thrift store anyway so why not learn as much as you can about everything that's in there and this this thread on this group really helps with that okay so let's see what else um okay here's remote controls I I've, I've heard of people having great success with these Kim said this was in her one dollar box for a yard sale it never sold decided to check out comps on eBay listed and sold six weeks later for full asking price and what was the full asking price twenty four ninety nine for a remote control that is not being used anymore and free shipping yeah it's small and light so that makes sense um, so if you've got remote controls laying around which a lot of people do because when you get cable or direct TV or whatever you've got you know they give you the remote so you don't need the remote that came with your um, your TV and all your other um, stuff that came with your TV if you've got a VCR DVD player whatever um, those things still sell so check out your uh, completed listings on eBay and see what they sell for okay now here's a good one Jeffrey paid twenty dollars at an auction sold for two hundred ninety five dollars three days after listing it is a vintage Olympia manual typewriter so let's take a look at this and yes typewriters are a challenge to ship but you just do like you do with everything else you wrap it in a lot of bubble wrap and put it in a really big box um, and you may want to double box it um, that means you put it you wrap it in bubble wrap put it in a box that fits it pretty well and then you get a bigger box and line that with packing peanuts um, styrofoam egg cartons something to cushion it and put the smaller box inside the larger box there's a lot of videos on YouTube about uh, shipping and packing if you ever have a question on how to ship something go look on YouTube you will find a video about it and um, incidentally you should be figuring this out before you even list the item really before you even buy it you need to think how am I going to ship this do I want to ship this so you should absolutely figure that out uh, before you list the item because it could sell immediately and then you're going to have to be in a panic to figure that out so back to the typewriter um, yes that is definitely vintage that looks like it's in great condition too I remember taking typing class in high school and at that point we had the electric ones um, so you didn't have to use this the automate the uh, the hand return thing here the handle um, we had the electric ones that had the the return button and the the carriage would just go to the other side and it was very loud in there but um, it says this has been well loved and used needs a new ribbon I am not a typewriter expert that's great to put in there because you may there are typewriter experts and people who collect these things so this was a 1959 German made manual typewriter and let's see it says it includes the original bill of sale well that's 
that's always great to put with vintage items when you find these at estate sales and it's still got the original receipt or in this case a handwritten bill of sale that's collectible right there um, just to have that piece of history with it because who even writes out receipts anymore who even writes anymore nobody writes anything everything's typed so that's the that's what eBay is all about right here is um, you know finding these items and getting them to the to a collector who will appreciate them and understands their value so turning twenty dollars into two hundred ninety five dollars in three days uh, okay Jeffrey you win the prize on this video <laughs> that's like the highest priced item and the fastest sale so Oh, he says, this is the 17th typewriter I have sold this year. Wrap them in stretch wrap to immobilize moving parts, then wrap again in bubble wrap. Use a thick, heavy box. This box weighed 45 pounds. He bought shipping through eBay. FedEx was the cheapest at $32. So, um, <laughs> Sheila says, I actually learned to type on one of these forever ago. So... And, and this is one of the things I love about eBay is just all the vintage items that bring back memories of when you actually used these things that are obsolete now. It just it just makes you think and it's it's kind of um, nostalgic just to know these things are still out there floating around. Okay, let's see what else. Oh, this is what I wanted to show you. Um, Susie bought this at Goodwill in January for 75 cents each and sold all to the same person last week for forty eight twenty seven. Had to wait till the right time of year, but the expiration date was still good. Now, why would somebody buy cake mix on eBay? When I go into my Walmart, which is a mile away, I see a huge display with hundreds of these caramel apple premium cake mix things on there for like a dollar. Um, but you've got to remember not everybody lives in the same place you do and they don't see the same things you see every day this um i wonder if susie would share with us where this went because that could have a lot to do with um who bought it it may have gone to a very remote area that doesn't have a lot of shopping or it could have just gone to somebody who doesn't want to go to walmart or the grocery store um in fact there's so many of these grocery delivery things now like Instacart is one of them where you go online and order your groceries and then they deliver it to you or um, Walmart has uh, grocery where you can place your order online and then you just drive into a special lane and they just bring it right out and put it in your car I mean there's a lot of people who don't want to go grocery shopping or who can't or who don't have time um, can't meaning maybe they're disabled maybe they don't drive anymore um, they can get on the computer and order what they need but there may be real reasons why they don't go shopping or don't want to go shopping so that's what you've got to think about is get out of your own head and think about your buyer um, and where they might be so um, down here people are being they're confused about why somebody would buy this on eBay and Susie says it's a seasonal product from Pillsbury probably Goodwill got it from Target and I got it on half price day um, so Sarah is saying I need to get over the who the heck would pay that much for that mentality and get to listing so and then Melanie says a lot of these seasonal foods are not worldwide or even in every state. People will pay insane amounts for certain foods because it's not available. And that is very true. Some of these seasonal items are not available in every single store in every single state all across the country. Um, so my advice to you if you're going to get into the seasonal foods is go wide and not deep. Um, I did this for several years on Amazon and it's very hard to um, make a profit because the market gets oversaturated but um, you know just make your money when you buy not when you sell make sure you're buying cheap um, and you know like in this case let's see she did free shipping and she did 1788 for two boxes so 
850 ish per box. Um, that is a inflated price, but you know, nobody's forcing this buyer to purchase this. They bought it on their own and I'm sure they had a very good reason for buying it. So as Sarah says, get over the who the heck would pay that much for that and just get listing. And that's exactly right. Um, okay, so here's another one. Um, Janae bought this hairbrush for 50 cents at a garage sale listed yesterday and sold for full asking price of $75 for a hairbrush and it's vintage and I think everybody in the 70s and 80s had a little a hairbrush like this I wonder what was so great about it it was pink unused who knows could have been bought for a movie set or some kind of collector um, again this is why we love eBay <laughs> bought a hairbrush for 50 cents and sold it for $75 um, let's see what the replies are on here if she's got any insight on that she says funny thing is I didn't look it up until I got home I knew I could make something on it since it was vintage and for 50 cents I grabbed it and I was shocked when I saw the comps. So if anybody has any insight on why a Avon hairbrush would sell for this much money, I'd love to hear that. Um, I know that some vintage hairbrushes sell for a lot if they're made of a special kind of um, like horse hair or there's some kind of hair they use to make those. Um, but this doesn't look like that. It looks like the the bristles are plastic. So who knows, but <laughs> what a way to make some money. Um, okay, let's pick a few more here. Hats. Hats are good to sell. Maria bought at the bins for 50 cents, sold three days later for $23.99 plus shipping and handling. She was tempted to keep it, but the only hats I hardly ever wear are baseball caps. And this was a Stetson fedora. Very nice looking hat. So, yeah, these are the kind of things that you want to look for in the... She said she got these at the bins, but I think she said that. Yes. Um, but... If you're in the thrift store anyway, look at everything. Look at belts, look at hats, look at belt buckles, look at all the accessories. You never know what's hiding in there for cheap that you can flip for decent money. And this this is the perfect flip. She bought it for 50 cents and sold it for basically $24 plus shipping. And it sold in three days. So um, if you're not looking at everything in the thrift store or at least making an effort to learn it takes a while it's a process um, you're definitely walking by things you can make money on all right so let me pick a couple of more here okay here is a good one um eric he's kind of new to the group he picked up this um at city thrift in lawrenceville on the clearance rack outside for 99 cents three weeks ago and sold it for $149.99 and this is a very high-end brand called Escandar I think is how you pronounce it or Escandar somebody correct me because I'm sure I'm saying it wrong um, let's see what it is here it's cotton so it's not even cashmere let's look at the pictures it's just a turtleneck top there's the label, 100% Pima cotton, nice tailoring, it's got a pocket in the front, he's got his measurements, so, and it's pre-owned, so a dollar, and he turned it into a hundred and fifty dollars, so, <laughs> way to go Eric, that was a great find, um, and he knew the brand so oh he says I didn't know until I looked it up before I bought it so yes look these things up um, 
that's like the holy grail of clothing is Eskandar is one of those brands like, um, uh, you know, Ralph Lauren black label or something that's, that's pretty high end. Okay. Let's just do a couple more here and we can wrap this one up. Um, calculators, always a good one. Brenda bought this for a dollar and sold in less than a week for $59.99 with free shipping. These calculators always do well and it doesn't even matter what time of year it is. Um, some people think they only do well during back to school and that is definitely not the case. So this is a Casio Algebra FX 2.0 plus calculator. And she's got all the pictures there showing that it works showing that it's in good condition, it's not beat up, and she sold it for $59.99. And I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but there are sellers who simply sell calculators. Like they'll come on eBay and they'll buy them and then they'll resell them under their calculator store. There's it's happened to me. It was called the calculator guy. That was his name on eBay and he bought something for me and then apparently relisted it in his store or maybe um, he's got a store beyond eBay, you know, a website or something. So that is one reason some of these can sell so fast. So make sure you're getting enough for it because you may be getting offers from a calculator reseller who is going to get a lot more for it. Um, make sure you know what these are worth and don't be in such a hurry to take a low offer because um, they do sell for a lot of money. Okay, actually I'm going to pick one more here. Um, I have seen this. Carolyn purchased at a thrift store half price day for 27 cents. The box was open but all five removers were in the box. Took about a month, sold for full price at 19 97 and it's probably some kind of discontinued item it's called scotch fur fighter and it's um is it the brush oh it's the refills yeah these kind of things do really well if they're discontinued because there's no other way to buy them than on the secondary market of ebay and amazon or online um, if they're not in the stores anymore and a lot of people get very hooked on a specific product and you know eventually they're going to have to change to something else because this is going to run out but this is a great way to make some money on something new in the box easy to ship um, so when you're digging through those bins or you're at the thrift store at, you know with all the junk I call it the junk in the back because <laughs> the clothes are always in the front um, this kind of stuff is can be high profit Okay, well, I'm going to wrap this up since we are approaching 30 minutes here or even past it. Um, again, come to my Facebook group. Oh, wait, I got a shout out to Sarah. Paid $5 on Facebook Marketplace, declined four offers, and received full price of $89.99 plus shipping. And this is a Finding Nemo costume. This is the perfect storm right here because we are... Uh, when this sold, it was just a couple of weeks before Halloween. Um, Nemo is very popular. Disney is popular. And is this a Disney store costume? I can't tell. It doesn't say on the tag. Either way, um, you know, Disney, uh, Nemo is always popular. And she got $89.99 and she paid five bucks for it. So. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll put together another Money Making Mondays coming up soon. And again, come join my Facebook group if you are not a member so that you can read through all of these great listings and learn more about selling on eBay. Have a great week. Bye.